Alright, so I have another um, IQ video coming up. Um, so today I'm going to talk about IQ and how it's um, had an effect on my life, okay? Uh, so where do I start? Okay, so I'm going to go back to my school days. Um, I actually left school six years ago. But yeah, you know, um, in school, I think in primary school, I kind of didn't have a clue what the hell was going on. Um, you know, I learned to talk late, read late and stuff like that. And looking back, I just think the the work, the overall work was just too difficult and I needed a lighter workload and I didn't really benefit much from that. Um, I used to do summer schools in the summertime and I feel like I did benefit a little bit from from those and I gained the, some basic skills like you know reading and writing and stuff like that but I was always uh, a bit below the other uh, students in my um, my class and uh, in secondary school um, yeah, I got poor grades in secondary school as well. I actually started to study a lot. Um, I was in a boarding school. You're sort of, we were sort of stuck in a study hall for hours every day. And, um, you know, I used to, I was known as like being the hardest worker in my uh, class. I still got like mediocre grades, like C's and D's and stuff like that. And, um, you know, looking back, I think I studied too much. Because, you know, in school, if you get a bad grade, the teacher will just say, oh, work harder. And that's a very lazy way of doing it. Um, you know, oftentimes there's more there's more to it than that. Okay, I had a low IQ. I was a very slow learner. So you know, I I'd be in a classroom and the teacher would explain something, and I'd hardly remember anything that they explained. But other students would actually learn more because they just had a sharper brain than me. And um, yes, yeah, so I was difficult getting uh, poor grades. And um, you know, through my junior cert at the age of sixteen, um, I think. Three months before I did that exam, I got a letter home saying that I need to study for five to six hours a day on my days off from school. And I was like, no way, they can't expect me to study that much. That's ridiculous. But then, you know, my um, when I got home, my parents said, oh, no, that's what you need to do. That's what it takes. And my dad would kind of force me to study for hours on end. So I'd study like two and a half hours a day on a school day. And then uh, weekends and stuff, I'd study five hours a day. And... Then again, I got mediocre grades like C's and D's, the odd B, I think in maybe maths and English I got a B, um, you know, and um, so yeah, leaving cert, um, I think, leaving cert is a two-year course uh, from the age of 16 to 17. Uh, at 17, you know, I, after studying so much, I kind of got fed up getting mediocre grades. I kind of gave up, but I didn't study as much, probably study about half as much for my leaving cert as I did for the junior cert. Um, and yeah, so in Ireland, the junior cert, sorry, the link cert, you can get a maximum of 625 points. I got 195 points. And, um, I actually cheated. <laughs> that might sound kind of funny, but it wasn't really my fault, okay? I had a scribe to do my exam. He'd write my exam for me. And he actually helped me out a lot in my biology and maths exams, which he wasn't supposed to do, but, you know, I got such poor grades anyway, I don't think they'll care. So I think if he didn't help me, I probably would have got, like, maybe 120, 130 points, um, you know, so yeah, you know, I did uh, quite poorly and, you know, I didn't want to go to college, I wanted to uh, do like a trade or something when I left school, but parents would not allow it, they threatened to kick me out if I didn't go to college, so I went to college and, you know, I had like a level 5 course and I didn't really make much of an effort, I kind of just went so I wouldn't get kicked out of the house. Um, yeah, then at 21 I got a job working at McDonald's, um, you know, I thought working at McDonald's would be easy. It was actually very difficult. It was mentally head wrecking. Um, I think when I was in my last year at school, I did an IQ test. I got seventy, which is pretty low. Um, when you have an IQ of seventy, working at McDonald's is actually very difficult mentally. It was head wrecking. Um, I think it took me four months to get the hang of my first station. Okay, so when you first start working at McDonald's, they have like eight different stations. And I think when you're kind of new, they kind of stick you on two different stations. Then once you get the hang of those two stations before they move you somewhere else. And they'd always have me on Chicken Patch and The Grill. And it took me about four months, or it was four or five months to get the hang of those two kind of stations. Okay? And uh, somebody had told me, uh, one of the guys I work with told me that uh, it would take the average person about a week to get the hang of their first station. So, a bit of a slow learner. And because, because of that, they, don't really, they didn't really put me on any other stations. I was just on chicken batch and grill the whole time or right, because I knew I was a slow learner they knew it would take me months to get the hang of any other stations 
So yeah, that was pretty boring just working the same two uh, stations. And even though I was working just the same two stations the whole time, my head was wrecked after every shift. Uh, I kept migraines from trying to keep up uh, and stuff like that. It was very difficult. Um, yeah, but then I think in um, November 2020, um, I actually uh, did some reading. I was, I was given a two-week holiday and, you know, this was November 2020. I was um, kind of bored. This economy was shut down in Ireland and stuff like that. So I actually did a good bit of reading. Uh, I think I did like an hour and a half of reading a day. And I came back. I just found the job a little bit easier. You know, and um, like I was able to keep up on fries. And before I was never able to keep up on fries. And I said to myself, right, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep um, studying, trying to improve my brain. I think maybe that's why I didn't improve when I was at school. I just did too much. So I know it's where I have to do a smaller volume of work to improve. And even doing an hour and a half of reading a day, I kind of, I think I improved a lot in the short term, but in the long term, I kind of started to plateau a bit. So I had to decrease the volume. Um, same thing happened. So I just kept decreasing the volume until I found the sustainable level of work, which is just 20 minutes of reading a day, six days a week. Um, that's what I do now. Well, I do 25 minutes now. And I just noticed my brain's improved a lot. I find working at McDonald's a lot easier. My head's never wrecked. Um, I'm able to work different stations I was never able to work before. So yeah, my IQ is definitely improved. You know, it used to be like 70. I'd, if I were to take a guess now, I'd say it's about 90, which is still a bit low, but it's good. It's a good improvement. I've been doing that for 11 months now. And uh, one of the main reasons I wanted to improve my brain was because I wanted to improve as a YouTuber. I was watching a video by Ryan Trahan where he said he got the Valedictorian Award in 2017 and he had to give a speech to a group of people and um, so I watched that and something clicked in my head and I realized right you need to be smart to be a good YouTuber you need to be you know and I never thought of YouTube as a intellectual profession or hobby but now I, I realize that it actually is I'm starting to see that pattern and I am proving but I have a lot of work to do so yeah that's what I do I just read for 25 minutes a day six days a week I make the odd video maybe like once or twice a week. Um, that's not my main priority. My main, main priority is just to get that reading in. And um, it can be very frustrating making videos every single day and not getting much uh, views or subscribers from it. So yeah, um, having low IQ definitely has had a negative effect on my life. Uh, it's kind of hard to put into words really. Um, it is a very depressing situation to be in. If you're, you know, if you work at McDonald's and you find the job very difficult. Um, I actually remember I worked at a restaurant called Weatherspoons in 2017 in Dunleary. And, yeah, I was only working there part-time. But, you know, I worked there for two and a half months. And, well, you know, they're a very poor company to work for. They don't really show you how to do the job. They kind of just expect you to pick it up yourself, I think. And, um, yeah, so I left after two and a half months. And I had no idea how to do, uh, what to do in that kind of job in like a kitchen so yeah so um if you have a low IQ I just want to tell you you can improve it um they, they say things like I read a statement somewhere saying that you can't improve your IQ much after the age of 18 that's not true okay that's clearly not true I've, I've clearly proved that uh statement to be false so yeah, you keep improving um on your IQ um, and just do small amounts of work, small amounts, and don't put yourself under any pressure to learn information. Because when you're in school, it's all you're you're put under too much pressure to learn information. For me, when I started reading twenty minutes a day, I didn't care how much information I remembered. In fact, I could remember hardly any information I read. But my goal was just to read for twenty minutes. If I read for twenty minutes in the day, that was my day's work done. Okay. And now, if I read for twenty five minutes, now I read for twenty five minutes a day, and I do remember quite a lot of what I read and um, yeah so just have a, a patient long-term approach towards your IQ and um, that's it that's my advice